Hello, everybody. Good morning, Twitch. How's everybody doing? Sorry, I had to get myself a little, little drink here, so I stepped away for a second. Let's get that open. Need a little bit of caffeine and sugar to get the day going. Probably light my face up as well. Yeah, that is one bright forehead. Let me tell you. All right. So, welcome. How's everybody doing? I'm feeling a little bit. Uh, Feeling a little bit, uh, I don't know. They they call it uh, when you're when you're about to leave a job and go to another job, like the last week or so of your job. They call it like short timers disease. Uh, I'm not leaving my job, but I am going to be leaving for a vacation in one form or another, starting this Saturday. So I've got the equivalent of short timers disease, but for a vacation, and it's been a long time since my last vacation. So. I'm ready to go, but I need to get some stuff done before I leave, because when I get back, uh, I will have a very short period of time until Code Palooza starts. So I need to make sure I have my presentation prepared, which I think I do. I think I could you know, give it today if I had to. Hey, Saduki, what's going on? Short timer syndrome. Yeah, that's right. I don't know if it's called something different for vacation. I know I asked this question about Christmas, Christmas break, um, and someone called it Yule timer's disease. <laughs> <laughs> which makes sense for Christmas, but I don't know about vacation. But glad you're here, Saduki. Good to see you. Maybe I can give a shout-out to Saduki. Why not? S-O Saduki. There we go. Saduki fellow MVP, fellow Ohioan. One of the, I believe one of the organizers of Stir Trek and many other community events. So definitely a good follow. Um... Maybe I can see. I, I, I don't know if Saduki is the correct pronunciation, but I think it's easier to say that than it is to say like uh, her full last name. <laughs> anyway, good follow. Go definitely go check it out. Slowly coming on to the streaming stuff. Got an intro out. Yeah, I don't really have much of a fancy intro right now. It's basically just a uh, this uh, Notepad++ here with some ASCII art, and I put a little like clock in there as a countdown. But, you know, I'm not much of a, a splashy intro type of guy anyway, so maybe someday. Uh, I know, uh, like, Taylor and Code, Chad Green, has, like, a real professional, like, voiceover, like, NFL football intro graphics thing. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. But, uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not a splashy, you know, type of guy, so that's what I got. A little bit of uh, creative control. Music. Yeah, shout out only works if you're a sub or a moderator, but I will definitely give out a uh, shout out to Taylor and Code. Okay, so anyway, 95. This is the 95th episode. Hey, Mr. Demon Wolf, what's going on? I haven't seen you on my channel in a while. What's happening? Oh, and a subscription from Saduki. I really appreciate that, Sarah. Uh, uh, I don't know if I want to use your real name. I don't know if you're comfortable with that, but Saduki. I'll just say Saduki. Unless you say otherwise. Thank you for the subscription. I appreciate that very much. And Mr. Demon Wolf, good to see you. I saw your video over on Blankenberg's uh, channel, Mr. Demon Wolf. Uh, it's good to know that he definitely wasn't kidnapped. <laughs> you still answered Sarah sometimes? Okay. <laughs> uh, I might slip up. I might say Saduki. I might say Sarah. One or the other. Working on front end. What you doing? Well, I'm getting to what I'm doing. I'm going to do some slides. I got a. Uh, I got most of the code. I think I've got all the code written. Uh, I say code, even though some of it's YAML. Uh, it still counts as code. I've got uh, that written and ready to go and tested, and I've run through that multiple times. I've got my demo ready. I've got the content I want to cover pretty much uh, done. I just need to get some slides out. Get slides finished. What are you presenting on? Yes, it is. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. Ashik Paul, hello. Ashik Paul, how are you doing? Thanks for stopping in. Uh, so anyway, uh, that's why I'm called this the second 90% because uh, there's an old, there's an axiom in computer science or I don't know if it's computer science, but uh, software development, I guess, is that the, uh, the first 90% of the code takes 90% of the effort and the, uh, the last 10% of the code also takes the second 90% of the effort, something like that. I, I'm terrible at, at uh, paraphrasing quotes, but I've been working through these slides and it just, you know, it's, it's, it's going longer than I expected. So I'm glad I'm doing this a lot in advance. I don't want to have to tweak this stuff at the last minute. 
All right, so let's get to this. Uh, yeah, questions. This is a question-friendly channel. Get those questions in. I don't, you know, if it doesn't have to be related to exactly what we're talking about, hopefully something about coding or tech or, you know, whatever. But uh, there's no such thing as stupid question here. This is a f uh, beginner-friendly place. They're learning. You're just starting out. You have a question. Maybe you don't have to be a beginner to ask questions, though. Let's talk about Fortnite. Uh, so I did this, a couple of videos uh, with me playing Fortnite with my kids. Um, and I, I called it Old Man Plays Fortnite. It, it didn't go well for me, let me tell you. <laughs> I'm not good at those games. My kids are. They just harass me. Uh, yeah, yes. Well, yes. I have Fortnite installed, actually, on this machine, in fact. But you can go find those videos if you go to uh, bit.ly slash grovestube and just search for Old Man Plays Fortnite. Uh, and that, that'll be a few videos of me. And I made a couple of highlight clips as well of the, of the funnier moments. Can you crack them 90s? See, I don't know what that means. Is that some sort of Fortnite slang? I no idea. I'm guessing no, I can't crack them 90s, if that's a good thing. If it's a bad thing, then sure. I'm, I'm sure I'm, I'm good at cracking the 90s. <laughs> My kids, I'm sure, are cracking the 90s. Oh, if, is that like, I don't know, can I be one of the last 10 people in the game? Like in a battle royale? Is that what that means? I don't know. Uh, okay. So, yes, ask those questions. It's a building thing. Okay, yeah, that's the thing. With Fortnite, like, the fort part, I'm absolutely garbage at. I can't, I can't, like, my kids do this, and they watch video, and they watch videos of people doing, like, building forts just on the fly, all the jumping and shooting and fight. I can't do any of that. Yeah, I have kids. I got two kids. I got a 12-year-old and a 10-year-old, Matthew and Emma, and they are the ones who are in those videos. Uh, the sort of, kind of in the background, uh, my son... I was playing Fortnite on a Switch, and I'll play it on the PC, that sort of thing. We play each other. Uh, I'm a member of Team Live Coders. You can go to Twitch slash Team slash Live Coders, and you'll see this list right here. Yeah, my yeah, we have a Switch. Uh, mostly, they just uh, they play a Fortnite on it. Um, I th I think there's a few other games. Uh, my my son plays a lot of MLB the Show these days. Uh, and Minecraft. Uh, we still have a Wii U, and he plays a lot of Minecraft on the Wii U. So, yeah, we've got all kinds of games and stuff around here. Anyway, Twitch slash team slash live coders. I will just give that a little shout out there in the chat. Definitely want to go and follow that. Oh, Mr. Demon Wolf, I should also give a shout out to, is a fellow team member. Definitely want to give Mr. Demon Wolf a follow. No Man's Sky. Never played No Man's Sky. Here's the thing with like most video games these days, they're like 3D and involve some sort of action, I am just absolute garbage at them. Just terrible. I'm the worst. I don't enjoy them. I'm not good at them. Nothing. So the, the games I play are mostly like weird, like off the beaten path type games. If I play any games at all. So um, like Portal. Portal 2. Uh, that's my jam. This, it's a little bit of action, yeah, but it's not like combat sort of thing, right? Uh, Katamari. Um... Uh, you know, a lot of Jackbox these days. What is this? What's this link here, Mr. Demon Wolf? It's a, it's a GIF. Um, this is what you're working on, I guess? Some sort of... Uh, it's interesting. Like a design you're working on? That's cool. You would not believe me, but this took many hours to get working. Oh, I believe you. I believe you. I, you know, responsive design, CSS, all that stuff. That is tough stuff. And I am not good at that either. <laughs> Uh, it's Tailwind and Nuxt. So Tailwind is actually something we're starting to use at Couchbase here a little bit, if I'm not mistaken. If you go to developer.couchbase.com, and this is very early stages of our new developer portal, I believe, and I'll just double check here in the source code, uh, somewhere in here is Tailwind. I could be wrong. Uh, maybe it's not on that particular page. I don't know. This is the one that I, I spend the most time on. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. This is like Netlify, so maybe it's unrolling it or something. I have no idea. But uh, yeah, and, and again, uh, that's so, not something I work on at all. <laughs> I don't. The CSS stuff is completely. It's like uh, it's like those uh, shooter games, it's like the action games. It's just it's just not where my talents lie. I can scrape by and and copy and paste and figure things out, but it's slow and doesn't look good, and it's just not my not my forte. <laughs> So anyway, uh, Twitch slash Team slash Live Coders, you're going to find people on here that it, where it is their forte, like Mr. Demon Wolf, perhaps. I guess we want to give him a follow. Tailwind is not really CSS. It's Uto Classic. You had the HTML. 
Oh, okay. I, I assume those those classes are tied to some CSS somewhere. I don't know. I don't. I don't, I don't really know. I like I said, not more than my forte. <laughs> All right. Well, what else? Oh, awesome developers streaming list. If you are a developer who's streaming, you want to get yourself added to this list. It's a big text file out there on GitHub. Just submit a pull request, but you can also go here to find other people you want to follow. So just do a control F, search for a name, search for a keyword like Python or Ruby or Go or, uh, you know, a Zig, whatever that is, etc. And uh, find someone you'd like to follow. And uh, let's see, is I don't, Sarah's probably not on here yet. She's just getting started, but this is where you want to go, Sarah. Once you get going, you want to get yourself listed here. So you'll definitely want to check that out. There's the link for that. Uh, bit.ly slash growth. I just mentioned this earlier, but bit.ly slash growth. So you can go find previous episodes of this show as well as old man plays Fortnite If you really want to see that <laughs> and other clips, I just made a clip of, uh, Sean Whitesell who was in here, uh, code with Sean. I think that's his name code with Sean. Give him a shout out as well. I hope I spelled that right. Yes, I did. Why am I thinking of all your base? Because that's, you need to move every zig, obviously, Saduki. You got it for great justice. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't think that's. Uh, I think that's pretty obvious. Hey, there he is. Yeah, we're just plugging a clip that I made of that quote about time. We're talking about time management, and so you can go to YouTube and find those clips as well. It's cool to redesign stuff and make it better. It certainly is. All right. Yes. Uh, all your base. Uh, that's for for your kids out there. That was one of those. One of those proto memes, one of those early memes. You go look it up. All your base are belong to us. You're not going to get it. You're going to be like, what is this nonsense? But uh, it's, this was it swept the internet for probably a good year. <laughs> Let's see. So events coming up. Code Palooza, of course. I'm working on that today. August 19th to 21st. You definitely want to go and sign up for this. Codepalooza.com. One of my top conferences, if I make a list to rank conferences, I don't know why I'd make a, a list to rank them. This is kind of mean, right? Because they're all, every conference is something cool about it. But, uh, you know, if I had to make a list of ranking conferences, this would be definitely in my, oh, I don't know, top five at least, maybe top three. Uh, yes. So anyway, you should go and sign up. This is the first time it's virtual. So you don't even have to travel to Louisville, Kentucky. You do want to go there. It's a cool place. But uh, can't this year, but you can still go to Codepalooza. It's virtual. Go check it out. And I will be presenting the session that I'm working on here today, developing and deploying your first ASP.NET Core microservice to Kubernetes. Whew. I think I need to get a shorter name next time. I could just put just a word cloud like ASP.NET, Kubernetes, microservice, CICD. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, Couchbase Connect is coming up. Couchbase Connect Online. Kadis. Kadis. Kubernetes. Rest in peace, Wilford Brimley. Wilford, Wilford Brimley. Yeah, Microsurfer. Yeah, put a little U for micro. I'm sure people will understand that. <laughs> it's funny because I was uh, I was working on my my new my new pinball machine from the 70s the other day. And I was talking to my dad about it. He, he works on, uh, my dad does it as a hobby. He restores like old radios. Um, and uh, some of the stuff that uh, he does for old radios applies like one-to-one -to, -one to old pinball machines. We were talking about capacitors. And, you know, he taught me all this stuff back in the day. But it was, it's just like riding a bike for me. Like I, rem I remember that kind of stuff. Like, oh yeah, that UF on a capacitor, that's microfarads. I remember stuff like that, but I can't remember like, oh, what time is, uh, you know, <laughs> what, what, what days do I have, what days do the kids have off for school or, you know, what are we, what, when's, uh, are we taking Matthew to tennis this weekend or Emma to tennis or Matthew to baseball? I can't remember that kind of stuff, but I can remember microfarads. I just, you know, I have a brain that keeps useless information. It locks it up, but actual stuff that applies to my <laughs> life uh, it just falls right out. So, Dayton Hamvention, Saduki, that I've been there multiple times. Loved that. They actually uh, they had their last one uh, three, three, four years ago. So there's no more there's no more Hamvention in Dayton. Uh, the Hair Arena, I think, shut down. Uh, so they just uh, stopped having it. It was just kind of sad because I hadn't been in a long, long time. I wanted to get. I always kept meaning to go to one more. 
of this Hamvention because that is the most epic of flea markets at the Hamvention. Oh, man. That was a great place. So my dad used to take me to that all the time when I was, oh, geez, probably 10, 11, 12, 13, somewhere around there. We went, went every year. We'd walk the whole flea market looking for some obscure little audio filter or tube or something. It's good times, but yeah, it's it's no more unless they've unless they've figured out a new venue for it. Oh, they did. Okay, all right. Well, still, I feel like the hair arena was kind of a big part of it. But uh, yeah, maybe uh maybe I'll be able to go to it uh, next time. Yeah, pico ferrets. Rarely ever use the pico ferrets. Mostly micro ferrets. May twenty one, twenty third. Okay. All right. Uh, May twenty one, twenty third. I'm gonna look it up right now because I. Uh, really liked going there. And it's not just for like ham ham radio people. I mean, that's mainly what it's for, right? But uh, the flea market out there is just electronics and software and collectibles and all kinds of crazy stuff. Like it was, it was good, good stuff. Uh, let's see. Canceled. So where is it going to be? I wonder. I, did, I mean, where, where was it bef going to be before they canceled it? Not a great website, but uh, let's see. I don't know. Hamvention Dara. Oh, oh, okay. Here it is, right there, right in front of me. It's just white text on kind of a light background. Green County Fairgrounds and Expo Center. I'm guessing that's the that's a uh, aerial shot of it. Huh. Interesting. Hi, 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 Naren Dev. What's going on? Oh, you get a table each year? So Kevin gets a table? What, does he sell anything? Or is it just like a, a way to like... Because some people would use them as like parking spots. They'd buy a table and drive their camper van or whatever and just plop down there. Yeah, Kubernetes is going on. Aaron Dev, awesome. We're doing some Kubernetes here today uh, as well. Uh, eventually, we're going to get to some slides there. We're still, work, still working through my intro. Oh, really? That's cool. Well, heck... Remind me next year, Sarah. Uh, post it on Twitter or something, and I will. I will definitely go and check that out. May weekend might be tough with uh, baseball and stuff with <laughs> my kids, but I, I definitely want to get up there at some point. Random electronic stuff they managed to find. Yeah, that's exactly those. That's the kind of stuff I love because I don't. I don't do ham radio much anymore. My my father did it for a while, even after I lost interest. I lost interest around the time the the web started becoming popular. If you can believe it, um, but he he went on for a couple more years after that. He had a, you know the Radio Shack and the tower and everything, but he's kind of he's off of that. He's just on to uh, he w worked on cars for a while, and now he's on to old radios and stuff. So he might actually want to go uh, see if he can find some interesting parts or radios to restore and work on and resell at uh, at that. So that would be great if I could take my dad to another Hamvention one of these days. That would be fun. All right, uh, Couchbase Connect Online, if you are using Couchbase, if you are doing anything with NoSQL that might be interesting to a Couchbase audience, I highly recommend you submit to this CFP, this call for papers, call for speakers. Uh, it's going to be a completely virtual event, of course, as they all are these days. The CFP is, doesn't close till August 21st. I probably will remind... Uh, one more time on Thursday and then after vacation, one more time after that. But, uh, the event itself will be October 14th, 15th. So I'll, I'll keep mentioning this event. Uh, and, and if, if you don't want to present, that's cool. But, uh, the event itself will be kind of an interesting format. Some of it will be on demand. Some of it will be live. It's my understanding. And there'll be lots of stuff there. We've got some great sessions lined up, uh, that are in the hopper from the community on some really cool topics that people are building stuff with Couchbase, so it should be really cool. Uh, happy vacation. Where are you going? To the lawn? LOL. I, I am going to leave it undisclosed for now. Um, I, well, part of the reason is I'm not 100% sure where I'm going. Uh, it may be the lawn. <laughs> we'll see how things shake out. Things are, things, are, uh, <laughs> things are fluctuating day to day, so we'll see. But uh, uh, probably a road trip. And uh, that's all I'm going to say at this point. <laughs> another conference coming up is All Things Open. This is another great conference. Polyglot Conference, 
based around open source, you definitely want to go and sign up there. I don't know if you can register yet. I think maybe you can. Uh, but you can go check out what it's out, sign up for the mailing list, all that great stuff there. All Things Open. I've been to All Things Open, I think, every year since I started with Couchbase. Because we're, like, we're, we're always sponsoring All Things Open. It's a great conference based in North Carolina. Of course, it's going to be online uh, these days. So which gives you a chance again uh, to, uh, if you can't travel there, now you can still attend All Things Open. Is All Things Open virtual? Yes. Yes, it is. You can find more information about it at All Things Open. 2020.allthingsopen.org. And there you go. So it's a virtual event, October 19th and 20th. And yes, 10,000 they've got this year. So usually it's like a 4,000, 5,000 person in-person conference, and they've doubled that just by going virtual. So again, that sort of really thin silver lining, uh, more people can attend because... Um, well, quote, attend, because there's no travel involved. Do you know Doug Starnes? The name is sounding really familiar. Doug Starnes. Doug Starnes. Why does that name sound familiar to me? Um, let me just look here. Doug Starnes. I, you know, I'm, not, I'm not seeing anything in my email. Uh, binary Chef. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I feel like I do. <laughs> is he on Twitter or something? Douglas Starnes. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. I, I, think, I think I may have met him once. I, I know of him, yes. Powered by Altnet. Is that, this is, was this a different Douglas Starnes then? I don't know. Anywho, what's that got to do with anything? Is he at virtual, is he at uh, All Things Open or something? Is that why you're asking? TDevConf, CFP is up. Uh, TDevConf, Okay. Yeah, okay, this picture I'm more familiar with. Yes. Yes. I've been to a few events in Tennessee area, Knoxville, Nashville, Chattanooga and stuff, so I probably ran across them there at least once. TDevConf. So what is TDevConf? Because maybe I should submit to that one as well. It's a new virtual conference presented by the .NET user groups in... Okay. Sounds cool. Well, I'm going to put that on my list. Something to do. Uh, where should I put that to remind myself? I'll just move this tab off the screen so I don't forget. Very cool. Well, thank you for that. All right. Uh, okay, so those are the events coming up. All things open. And let's get on what we're doing today. So I created that highlight of Sean's quote. So that's uh, done and done. I worked on some ASP.NET microservices. Uh, so that's not done, but I, I, did, I did in the past. I'll keep doing it today. In the future, I still want to get that backup going. Uh, I've been working a little bit with one of my colleagues. He's got a backup script uh, blog post, I think, coming out soon, or not? If not a blog post, some sort of script, which I may end up. Well, I may end up using, uh, but we'll see. Stuff I can always do: Clash of Code, Chatbot features. I really got to get to that C Sharp Advent stuff. Uh, my friend Calvin is. Uh, you know, we've been sort of working on this. Calvin's going through some stuff. Recently, so I've kind of put it on the back burner along with our podcast. We've just kind of put that stuff back burnered. So if you're watching Calvin, hey, hope things are going okay for you. Hope you're doing good. Um, and, uh, and just sorry, obviously. Um, but uh, I hope uh, you and your family are doing all right. And uh, I look forward to talking to you whenever you're ready. Uh, so today we are working on ASP.NET. So Naren Dev has been just champing at the bit here to know what's uh, going on with Kubernetes. Uh, yeah, so I am doing a presentation just to show like a real basic intro to creating a, a single microservice, basically, uh, and some of the considerations about microservices. But we're going to just walk through, I'm going to go through like an intro. Uh, I'm not going to go through this yet again, because I've been practicing this over and over. I'm so sick of it. But an intro of just a you know, quick, funny intro. And then, you know, what are my goals for today? Here's what I'm going to cover. Here's what I'm not going to cover with microservices. I go through, you know, why, what's a microservice? Why would you use it? Why wouldn't you use it? Uh, and then after that, we'll get into actually developing one. So I'll start creating one in ASP.NET Core, um, which, I mean, a microservice in ASP.NET Core, it's not terribly different, although I'll be using Docker and Kubernetes and some, some things that are kind of different, uh, for instance, like using environment variables for configuration, kind of a 12-factors thing. Show a quick demo of that. So once that's actually built, the next thing is to actually deploy it. 
Dapper Open Telemetry, can you please say some on it? I've not used Dapper. I can't say much. I, I know it is a, I, I think, without having used it, uh, it, is, it is kind of like a service mesh pattern, like a little sidecar that can provide you a lot of these things uh, that I, I talk about in the session, like uh, throttling and uh, bulkheads and things like that. I, again, not 100% sure. I've not used it yet. Because um, I, I assume it's similar to Istio. That's, that's why I'm making the assumption. I know Istio. I, I assume they're very similar. Uh, I, I don't 100% know for sure. Open tracing, open telemetry. I, again, I'm far from an expert on these, but the idea is um, uh, is that uh, you have multiple services and you can have a bug. Uh, the bug may not be discovered until it hits you know, two or three different services. So how do you, how do you find a root cause of that? Um, of that bug. And one of the ways you can do that is something called open tracing or open telemetry. One is an implementation of the other, something like that. Uh, and it basically allows you to give a individual request, some sort of token, an ID, a piece of information. And that piece of information travels with that request as it goes throughout your architecture. So that can help you kind of nail things down. Yeah. yeah Dapar.io. Dap you can go check it out here. Here's some details. It's a, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it's the, the, the description here is pretty vague, but I, I think that's, you know, it provides you some of those, some of those things you want to, to, uh, make your microservices a little bit more, uh, independent of each other and, uh, um, you know, to work nicer with each other, that sort of thing. Uh, okay. Yes. Code, Code Sean. Sure. Uh, you got Cecil Phillip talking on DAP R September 10th. Sure. Throw a link in there. Uh, Code with Sean. Sounds good to me. I think a DAPR session might be good at uh, Conduct as well. Although it's not really a .NET specific thing. Uh, my understanding is DAPR is uh, language agnostic. Uh, it works, you know, as sort of a, uh, what do you call it? It just, it's like a proxy kind of thing. Uh, again, that's my understanding. I don't 100% know for sure because I've not used it yet. But I thought I'd mention it as one of those different tools there. Okay, uh, we're, we're, so yes, we're back here. So I'm going to work on the slides today. And of course, answering questions as always. Steel Toe, Steel Toe IO. I think I saw this mentioned recently somewhere. This is a similar thing, right? This is uh, just a, no, no, wrong. This was, I remember seeing this. This was for .NET specifically. So this might be more like, um, what do you call it? Hystrix sort of thing. I don't, I don't know for sure. Okay, slides. I know 0%.net. Ha ha ha. Well, that's okay. It's totally fine. Because, you know, like I said, DAPR and uh, tools like that are not .net specific. Um, a tool like Hystrix, for instance, is Java specific. And it's, it's, kinda, it's kind of been archived anyway, that, that sort of tool. I imagine Steel Toe might be a similar thing, but I'm not sure. Um, and there's some drawbacks to that. Uh, to hist if, it, if it's like Hystrix, and I'm, it's a big if because I don't know. <laughs> but uh, if it's like Hystrix, it's something you have to, you have to build into your code. Uh, as opposed to something like DAPR or Istio, uh, tools like that, you can apply it to any sort of microservice. So. Let's see, a .NET conference last week, I was answering questions in chat. Fritz was moderating. Day two, someone made me VIP on there. It was on the Visual Studio Twitch channel. Well... We're in the presence of a VIP, everybody. Okay. So here's, this is where I've gotten so far, deploying a microservice. This is kind of my uh, crash course to Kubernetes. This is meant to be a very intro level type session. Crash course, what Kubernetes is, it basically, in my mind, it converts, you know, combines YAML and machines, nodes, into uh, you know, pod deployments. That's basically how I see it. I know it's a lot more than that, but that's, uh, fine for an intro. Then I talk about the actual YAML files. Here's the one for the ASP.NET Core app. Here's the one for the load balancer that goes in front of ASP.NET Core. Matt is the expert here. I'm yeah, right. I'm not an expert on anything. Uh, and then this is the Couchbase cluster, a YAML file, which actually uses something called an operator. 
because you can see up here that the kind on these is couch-based bucket and couch-based cluster, which if you're familiar with Kubernetes, you know those aren't kinds that come with Kubernetes. So how, where do those kinds come from? And the answer is the operator pattern. Uh, and so what I've got here is I've brought up the operator pattern uh, documentation and hoping it's some inspiration for what this slide should look like. Uh, unfortunately, it's not very visual. It's a really good explanation, but it's not super, uh, like I can't just throw this on a slide. Uh, but let me just, I'm just gonna try to look through some points here to try to spark some, spark some uh, ideas. You have a CRO of Couchbase in Kubernetes. CRO, I'm not sure what CRO stands for, but yes, I am running Couchbase in Kubernetes as part of this demo using the operator. Um, so yes, absolutely. Of course I am. <laughs> All right, so yeah, so the thing is an operator, this is an example of some things and they use all oh, custom resource operator. Uh, yes, although, I, so I've heard uh, CRD, custom resource deployment. Is that, is it the same thing? Because to, to install the operator, one of the things I have to install is a CRD YAML file that comes with the operator when I download it. But yes, yes, I have a, and, and, well, so let me take that back because it's not something I built. All right, this is something that Couchbase actually provides. So if I go to Couchbase, yeah, cu custom resource definition, there you go. Not deployment, definition. But uh, something Couchbase provides is an autonomous operator. Uh, so I don't have to build that myself, which which rather what I had to do if I, there was no operator, I'd have to figure out that stuff myself. The operator makes that much easier to do, which is what I want to explain here in this slide. Is that basically um, there's a Kubernetes API, and that's fine, um, but it doesn't. Uh, can I show the CRD YAML file? I can. I, it's not. It's really long and not super interesting. Here it is right here. It's, I mean, this is just a spec about a, a, a resource, right? So you can see I've got a Couchbase bucket is defined in here and Couchbase cluster is defined somewhere else, yeah, right here, right? So this is really long YAML file, right? That's, that's what this is. <laughs> uh, this is not something you wanna make changes to, I don't think, but there you go. There's a CRD YAML file. And this is, you know, you can download this from couchbase.com slash downloads. Go to the Kubernetes section. It's not the only thing. There's also some other stuff uh, that comes with that. And there's also a Helm chart, which I'm not covering Helm in this session either. Oh, OMG, that's too long. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's lots of stuff you can, you can do. The operator can do for you. You don't need to use all of this. Uh, but this is, this, is, you know, this is not something that you'd write yourself <laughs> or make changes to. So they have it on the website for download, right? Yeah, yeah, they do. So I think I showed it right here. If we go to couchbase.com slash Kubernetes, uh, we can go to couchbase.com slash downloads. Probably is a better place to go. Downloads. And then you can see you've got uh, server as an option and you've got operator with Kubernetes and uh, there you go. I don't know if Windows makes a difference and what type of operator you download. It just detected that's my operating system. Yeah, 2.0.1, this is kind of, this is probably Toucan that's causing problems. Okay, so there's other OS. I don't know if that makes a difference for the operator though. This is just part of the detecting what OS I am. But then you see around 2.0.1 and uh, we're actually, Couchbase is the first uh, NoSQL database company to release a Kubernetes operator. Uh, which is which is pretty awesome, and we're we're on version two plus now of that operator, and I think we partnered up with Red Hat initially to get that happening for OpenShift, and yeah, it's just uh, it's something that uh, Couchbase has spent a lot of time on, and I believe this operator is being dog fooded behind the scenes for Couchbase Cloud, which is our DBAS offering, which is now available uh, as a free trial, so a uh, thirty day free trial of that. Uh, that works with your Amazon, um, what do you call it? So many acronyms. Uh, VPC. <laughs> yes. Connect to your Amazon VPC. 
and it'll spin up and manage Couchbase Cloud for you. But I believe that uses the operator behind the scene. Anyway, yes, that's there. Yes, there are Helm charts available. Um, I don't, honestly, I haven't, I haven't used a Helm charts. I haven't tried it in a while. I don't know if it's up to date with the current version of the operator, but I know there is a Helm chart. Um, Helm chart, couch base. Here it is. Okay. Oh, maybe, maybe it is. Maybe this is, this is updated then. Uh, you need Helm 3.1 and there you go. You can add a Helm chart. All it, all it does is install the operator as far as I know. Too many acronyms, S3, S4, K3S, what's K3S? K, K8S, ba ba, ab ba ba mum. <laughs> Starting to get a little silly there in there and Dev. Yes, there are so many acronyms. Uh, although it's not as bad uh, as like when my, my brother comes to visit or I go visit my brother, he's in the military and they have an acronym for like literally everything. <laughs> they probably have an acronym for what I just said. Uh, so, they're, we're not as bad as the military, I don't think, but we're pretty bad with the acronyms. K3S is like micro Kubernetes. Oh, you know, I tried uh, micro K8S recently. I didn't try K3S because what I've I've had trouble getting Kubernetes to run correctly on my local machine, like Minikube, micro K8S. Um, I, I, I can't get them to work. I don't know what, the, what, what I'm doing wrong. Uh, but AKS for me works totally fine. Uh, so I was using that. But uh, I'm going to check this out. K3S. Put that over here in my two checkout tabs. It's uh, interesting. It's K3S. So this doesn't run locally. Or does, or does it run locally? I don't know. Interesting. Let's check that out. Micro KS is best so far. Yeah, I think I tried that and I had some problems with it. Uh, yeah, I, I think I tried wor working with this and I got error messages and uh, it just wasn't wasn't happening for me. So I don't know. I but AKS is fine. I use it. Seems to work okay. And it's you know that's a little more realistic anyway, right? That's an actual place I would. I would deploy to AKS. I, I'm not going to deploy to a Minikube instance, uh, except for local local testing. So, okay. So anyway, operator pattern. Um, hmm. What's a good way to think of an operator pattern? Like, you have the Kubernetes API, and you have some sort of stateful application, usually. But Kubernetes doesn't know itself anything specific about that stateful application. Uh, it just has its own API. It doesn't have something specific. If you have WSL2, you can snap install MicroKS. I don't have WSL2 yet. I don't know. I don't. I don't know what's going on here. But uh, I'm still on 1909 of Windows 10. So I don't have 2004 yet. So no, no WSL2. I don't know what's going on there. I'm a, I must be last on the list to roll it out to. Okay. Uh, all right. So I'm, what I'm thinking of is I'm going to get rid of this. I'm thinking you have to enable it. Have to enable what? 2004? I don't think I can enable it until I have version 2004, which I have 1909. Oh, it's available in 1909? I could have sworn it was 2004. Anyway, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do that today, uh, but I'll, maybe I'll look into that some more. Okay, so what I'm thinking of is maybe a box to represent Kubernetes API, uh, and then maybe another box. Gotta love boxes to represent, I don't know, uh, Couchbase API, maybe. And um, basically, K Kubernetes doesn't know Couchbase API, so it doesn't know anything. It can't do anything Couchbase specific. But if I then put in, I don't know if a box would be the right shape here, but maybe something like this operator. 
uh, and that will allow Kubernetes to speak Couchbase or to speak, you know, whatever else, uh, Kafka or Rabbit, any other stateful applications, right? That sort of thing. So how's that for an illustration? Do you think that's, you know, a reasonable way to explain what an operator is? Good luck with the slide designs. Well, again, I told you I'm, I'm not so good with the, with the design and the, and the layout and stuff. I, that's why I'm using this Couchbase template um, because it's got some of the color stuff already figured out and different slide layouts and things. So um, I'm trying to stick to that. But I'm just wondering if that's a good enough explanation for the operator pattern. I don't, again, I don't want to go too deeply into it. Um, maybe, maybe a link to, you know, there's, there's this thing called, hmm, something called operator hub. That might be a good second slide. It kind of shows a bunch of different operators that are available for different things, right? So, um, I don't see one for rabbit or Kafka, but there's gotta be one for rabbit and Kafka. I could have sworn there was. But like Aka cluster is in here. Operators can do it. Yeah, certainly. Uh, but I think they're most useful for stuff that has API or API. Stuff that has state. Um, you know, because, you know, Kubernetes, just plain Kubernetes can do a lot by itself in terms of managing services. I, I, yeah, I know they're not tied strictly to stateful applications, right? But it seems to me like that's where I would, I would get the most value out of them. Right, so a lot of databases on here, or you know, queuing tools, things like that. Oh, let's see. So I'm wondering if this might be something to include as well, like a screenshot from that. If I could just, there's 144 operators on here. If I could just search for database and show a screen, I've done that in the past to show a screenshot of database operators. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's have another slide, I think. Oh, and your slides mentioned as state agnostic. So, screenshot of this. Yeah, see, there's different categories here. Database, certainly, big data. Um, storage, streaming messaging. Streaming messaging, but there's no, there's no Kafka? Oh, here it is. Yeah, there's Kafka from Bonsai. I don't see Rabbit on here, though. That's interesting. Um, anyway, it, yeah, that's... I can just click database. That's cool. Yeah, so, I mean, mention it as state agnostic. Yeah, I suppose, but like, there's not like an operator for ASP.NET, for instance. What is Akka? Akka is distributed computing um, framework. Where well, again, I've not, uh, I've not used Akka. I'm just familiar with it. You've heard of Kafka, but not Akka. Well, they're two different things. So Akka is like the uh, what's the pattern called? Gosh, help me out here, chat. The ACA pattern is the actor model of distributed computing. Um, yeah, stateful distributed applications. Uh, and Kafka is more like a streaming, um, I don't know, message, messaging bus kind of thing. Yeah. Two, kind of two different approaches. Event-driven architecture, if not mistaken. For ACA, event-driven? Well, this isn't just a Kubernetes pattern. I don't see the word event-driven on there for Akka. I think, oh, maybe Kafka is event-driven. Yes, that makes more sense. Event-driven, I think, is the right word. Yes. Akka, I don't think, is event-driven at all. I think it's actor-driven, right? It doesn't say actor here either. So anyway, whatever. They're both kind of similar tools to distribute computing around um, your, you know, uh, your your whatever, distribute your workload around and, and to provide scaling, things like that. Kafka is messaging with retained state. All right. So anywho, I'm thinking a screenshot of this, maybe for the second slide, although I'm going to turn off Toucan for this. I'm seeing a problem with Toucan now. 
I'm seeing a couple problems with Toucan at this point. But, uh, I need to learn more about the actor pattern. So just a, just a screenshot. Ah. So it doesn't have to be anything particularly legible on this. Copy the clipboard, and I'll put that over here. And I'll just put a link to mention operator hub io is nats similar to kafka i don't know what nats is so I'll put that in there and this is going to have to be uh bigger now i'm going to take out the whoops i'm going to take out the database part of it operator hub io and yeah, i'll center it why not center on the whole thing I don't know what Nats is either uh, I know the Washington Nats Nationals uh, I don't know we can search real quick see what Nats is Nats uh, I don't know um, software Nats.io simple secure scalable open source it's generally available a messaging system okay yeah, I'm guessing it's probably like Kafka or um, Rabbit or something like that. Yeah, I never heard of it. Okay, uh, so I've got that. Now, what about this graphic here? This is super plain. Uh, I, I mean, I guess I could just stick with the box arrow box, box double arrow box. And just display them, kind of, uh, you know, animate them. That's probably fine. What is this? That is 24, 24, 24. Okay. And I can probably use a little, uh, little icon on there. Kubernetes logo. So, something like this. Oh, no, I want one with... Uh, throw in some pods images. <laughs> pods? Um, you think... I think pods would, would be... Like little, little cylinders, you mean? You know, I think you might be on something there, Naren Dev, because Kubernetes doesn't look at them as database nodes. It just thinks of them as pods. And Couchbase thinks of them as nodes of the database. So how do we let Kubernetes in on the fact that, hey, this is a database and here's how, here's how I want you to operate it. I think you're onto something there. So I could throw some boxes down here that are like pod, pod, pod. And over here it would be node, 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 database node, stuff like that. I might, that might work. All right, let me get a uh, Kubernetes logo with like a transparent background. Something like this. Oh, that's like cut off. I don't like that. If we use Couchbase inside a pod, it's a pod. Well, right, from Kubernetes point of view, it's a pod. It's always a pod, right? Uh, from Couchbase's point of view, it doesn't matter if it's running in Kubernetes or it's running in, you know, um, VMs or wherever. <clears throat> but the operator is what lets Kubernetes uh, operates, <laughs> operate, uh, understand how to, um, well, I don't know if it's, hmm. It, it just gives Kubernetes extra information. They both talk effectively. Yeah, I think that's right. I'm going to write some of this down here. <laughs> Pod images and uh, helps. Kubernetes and Couchbase talk effectively. Effectively is kind of vague, but I think it's a good place to start. Uh, so, you know, Kubernetes sees pods as pods, just general purpose pods. Uh, Couchbase sees uh, each pod as a node in a distributed database.
What's up, TBD Gamer? Love it when a plan comes together. Good to see you. Glad you're here. Binary Chef. Uh oh, we were talking about Binary Chef earlier. Oh, am I in trouble? Did I say something wrong? <laughs> Someone mentioned Binary Chef earlier. That's Douglas, right? If I'm not mistaken. What did I, what did I do? I, it sounds like you did something awesome. You're working on some sort of uh, new virtual conference, TDEVConf. That's right. His ears must be burning. I didn't tell him. Oh, no kidding. <laughs> I figured Sean just like, hey, we're talking about you. Better get in here. You can also come up with slide-worthy sentences. Yeah, I love it. Uh, so Couchbase sees each pod as a node in a distributed database. Um, so the operator, what was the sentence up here? It's a middleman. Operator is like, it's like a middleman. Yeah, it's kind of like that. Middleman to translate. Yeah, I like that. Sean's talking about me. It can't be good. Uh, he said that uh, he liked TDEVConf, but he thinks you should call it TboneConf instead. He thinks that would be a better name for it. I think TboneConf. Narendev, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for the great uh, ideas there. Enjoy your dinner. Good to see you again. So how, how are we doing on that uh, that that name there? Uh, T Devconf. It's pretty good. Uh, pretty good name, but I think T Bone could be could be really uh, really interesting. Just just think about it. You don't have to say no right now. Just think about it. Sleep on it. <laughs> All right. Uh, so this one almost cut off. Is this one? I can yeah. I can take this one. Here we go. Copy image. I'll just crop it a little bit. So we'll throw this in here, maybe throw it in here. T-Bone Conf, a dev equivalent of SQL Grillin. <laughs> uh, nope, how do you crop in Power, PowerPoint again? Is it Control? No. Shift-Alt, something like that? What is the, what is the crop? Does anyone remember? No, I can just do that. Don't, I'll just use the natural slide to crop, no. $12 for the domain has already been exhausted our budget some next year. Oh, okay. Well, you know, something to think about. <laughs> maybe maybe the after conference party. You could call it T-Bone Conf. I don't know. I'm kidding, of course. That was not what Sean said. That was just my dumb idea. Um, I only bring it up because uh, I was watching a Reds game this last, yesterday, the day before, and there's a, there's a pitcher named Anthony DiScofani. And his nickname has been Disco, like Disco Fani, Disco. But he doesn't really care for the Disco nickname. His, in fact, his nickname growing up was, was, uh, was T-Bone, <laughs> which reminded me of the Seinfeld reference, T-Bone. So I think it comes from like, uh, like Anthony, is, and then the Tony is short for the Anthony. So you have, you have Tony, and then it gets shortened to Tone, and then T-Bone, that sort of thing. So. We get Couchbase to sponsor the steaks. They could have a steak in it. They could have a steak in it. You know, I have to look this up every time. Is crop image in PowerPoint. You can make a right rectangle to hide the... No, I don't want to do that. Um, see, look. It's... it's uh, <laughs> I've clicked this multiple times. It's like, what is this? Uh, crop tool. Oh, is it just... Is there just like a crop button or something? Shape, fill, arrange, drawing. Uh, view, uh. Oh, here it is. Yeah. Keep reading what I, what I wrote. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Shape, format, union, or intersect. No, here's what it is. Here's crop. Right click, crop. Ah, crop. It's it's different than like every other tool that I use for cropping because it's either like like OBS for instance you crop with like Alt and then drag it. I should do my slides on stream. It would force me to stream consistently and finish the slides. Two birds with one stone. I got some bad news for you, Binary Chef. If you're going to stream them, <laughs> they're going to get done slower. <laughs> Anything you do on a stream is going to be slower. Not a bad thing. Um, it's just be aware of that going in. If you really want to get heads down and get some work done, uh, streaming is not going to be the approach. But then I, you know, I, I wouldn't be able to hang out with all you cool people and get this great input as well. Like Narendev had some really great sentences here 
I think would nice, concise explanations. It might focus you on getting it done, but getting it done, another struggle. <laughs> um, you know, that's, that's why I called this stream, I called it the 90%, the 90-90 rule. Because I've, I've made progress on these slides, but uh, if I was, you know, not streaming and not talking and not answering questions, I would, I would be, uh, I, would, I would probably be a lot further along. That being said, maybe it's better for it because I'm sort of building it with people's feedback as I go. So maybe it's a better, it's going to be a better uh, presentation. Okay, uh, I'm going to change the colors on these two. So, so we got operator, and there's not really an operator logo as far as I know. Let's see if we can find a couch base. Uh, logo with a with a background something like that yeah that'll work okay that one I'll need a crop that doesn't look so good with the blue background there and then an operator so I uh, maybe some clip art for the operator I don't know any, any thoughts on that I am the operator with my pocket calculator do you think anyone would get that reference I just put a picture of Kraftwerk in there. <laughs> Do you think that would, anybody would understand that at all? Does anybody in the chat understand that at all? <laughs> I would enjoy it immensely, but I don't think anyone else in the world watching this presentation would understand what I was talking about. So I won't do that. All right, Kubernetes. Let's see. What color? What color for the Kubernetes? Purple? Uh, pink? Gray? Maybe like a dark gray? I don't know. Cosplays, of course, should be red, but um, the logo's already red, so maybe a lighter red? Something like that? I don't know. What do you think? Regardless, I'm flattered you're talking about TDEVConf, especially considering how we almost dropped the ball on it. Hey, I didn't, I didn't know anything about that. So as far as I know, it's this uh, perfectly executed uh, conference. <laughs> to, to, my, to the best of my knowledge. <laughs> okay, operator. Okay, so we're going to, of course, we're going to, ah, wow, no. Settle down there, PowerPoint. We're going to animate everything here. That's going to be a fade skis. And then we're going to animate this here. That'll be a fade. And then this one will be a fade. Okay, now uh, the pod images. Um, so I did that earlier. I had these little pods. I could do that here. Let's make them a little smaller. And the thing is, oh, I don't know, that's probably fine. It's a bunch of little pods. And then for couch base, we'd want to put little cylinder shapes in there because it's a database. Those are, those are called nodes. Ah, copy, node. Let's copy this again and node. Okay. Well, uh, binary chef, I am thinking about submitting to that conference, and um, I'm looking forward to learning more about that conference. Uh, let's see. I want this to fade, but I want them to fade with the. Uh, have we met before? By the way, we were talking about that. Uh, Sean asked, "Do have you ever met Douglas Starnes before?" And I think we have met. I'm not a hundred percent sure. I know I've been to multiple events in Tennessee, so I'm sure we we must have met at least in passing. There's a bunch of us rooting for you all on this, and we'll do what we can to help. You pay the speakers. Well, now we're talking. <laughs> we have met several times. Okay, I'm I'm really bad with that kind of stuff. So sorry. Rudix World, hello. What's going on, Rudix World? Glad you're here. Good to see you. 
Okay, I want these to follow up the number two skis. That's from the previous. I met in Louisville last year. Oh, at Code Palooza? I think I... That's the only time I went to Louisville was for Code Palooza. I think. I don't know for sure. Code stock. Oh, I'm sure we met at... Yeah, yeah, I've been... So I haven't been to Code stock in a while. Um, I think it was there. I was planning to go down this year, I think. Uh, yes, I was planning to go down. I had a, had a uh, rental car and everything ready to go for that. Uh, I was going to go, but, uh, yeah, that was one of the early, that was on the early wave of cancellations. I've been to a few code stocks in my day. I'm, I don't think I was at the first one, but I've, one of the early ones I've been at. I was planning to go to a lot of places this year, yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of one of the jokes I make on this slide right here. Is uh, this is an old picture I took when I used to leave the house and wear suits, and this is what I look like in 2020. Because it's been a rough year. <laughs> Spending your conference budget on your studio. Okay, so all right, so so we want to say I'm going to start with Kubernetes. Just sees pods as pods. It's general purpose pods. Um, doesn't treat them differently. Uh, doesn't treat them differently. It doesn't well. <clears throat> it does. It does. It can treat them differently depending on how you. Uh, oh, you want to shout out? Why isn't that working, Saduki? Subscribers should be able to do that. Binary chef, I will do it. Um, but that sounds like a bug. Let me just double check. It might be just moderators. I don't know. I'm sorry about. I didn't mean to mislead you. Uh, let's see. I'm going to check right now. Because I think I've had this question come up before. Uh, you're being volunteered. To new subscriber? No, I shouldn't. I shouldn't. Have, it should be checking immediately. Let's see. Uh, looking for shout out request handler, which is a what? Where is it? Shout out handler. Subscriber. Yeah. If it's so, if it if you're not a subscriber and you're not a moderator, it should return. Otherwise, it should allow you. What in the world? Hmm. That's unfortunate. Yeah, TBD Gamer, you're slacking. Get those shouts. Why don't you try it, TBD Gamer? See if it works for you. I think you're a sub and a mod. If I, am I doing this logic wrong? If not a subscriber and not a moderator, then just return. Okay, it works, TBD Gamer. Hmm. And now I've got tests for this too. Shout out handler. I thought, well, maybe I don't have tests for this. Shout out I'll shout out tests. I got shout out tests, okay. Oh, I've got some tests commented out. That's not good. Oh boy. <laughs> Why do I have tests commented out? Ah, uh, if I wasn't a sub, that wouldn't work. That needs an or. Well, it says if not a subscriber and not, a, oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. It should be if not a subscriber or not a moderator. Oh, gosh. So this basically says you have to be both, right? Wow, this should have come up in tests. Why, Why do I have these tests commented out? Ah, Sorry about that, Sudoku. I'll get that fixed. Uh, that adds the bug. The tests, they fail. Comment them out. TDD done it right. Yep. That was what I was trying to do. Uh, let me see. Shout out. This is definitely a bug. So, uh, this is my backlog for the, for the chat, by the way. Shout out should work for 
moderators or subscribers. Well, moderators, excuse me, moderators and subscribers and mod sub. Should work for all three of those things. Yes, good job, Saduki. Good job on that uh, on that uh, test there. I test in production. That's pretty much how I roll. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay. Okay, so Kubernetes sees pods as pods. It's general purpose pods. Uh, it, it doesn't really know the difference between a, uh, an ASP.NET Core pod or a Couchbase node pod. Uh, oh, you know, wait, let me see this. Yeah, I, I need Kubernetes. It doesn't, I can just be visible. It doesn't need to be animated in. I'll just start with that. Then Couchbase, then operator. Okay. I also test financial transactions for negative values. How do you think I get paid? <laughs> Did you see that shirt that uh, Semf had recently? Let's see, because I really, really wanted one. Okay, of course, Bill Semp, the creator of the, uh, the famous QA, uh, QA uh, tweet. Yes, he's, he's the one who did the, 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 the tweet. Uh, QA, I think it's a QA, or a tester walks into a bar, orders a beer, orders zero beers, orders negative beers. Orders, uh, you know, S S F J J J S N F, and uh, this is a Heineken logo, of course, but it's got S F J J S N F in it. This is a shirt that I want, but he says that uh, it's out of stock or it's not around anymore. Uh, so that's that's lame because I want one. <laughs> Let me see if I can find this tweet. S F D E L J K N E S V. Of course, that would be Semf. Very, yeah, here it is. This has got 228,000 retweets at this point, and it, it like goes through waves. So every once in a while, Bill Semf is like, oh, I guess it's going through a wave now because I've got 1,000 Twitter notifications. Oh, there it is. You found it. Q engineer walks into a bar, orders a beer, orders zero beers, orders 9999999 beers, orders a lizard, orders negative one beers, orders a... <laughs> So there you go, and that he just there's I don't know if he created it or someone created a shirt that you substitutes this for for Heineken. So I love it. I'm not a beer drinker, but I would wear that shirt for sure. <laughs> after that many, after nine nine nine, I wouldn't be able to say Heineken either. You would have to. You would probably wouldn't even be speaking English anymore. It's just a series of slurred sounds. <laughs> the shirt teespring.com okay here it is oh well it looks like it's available i wonder if does he get any money from this or what okay this is the shirt that i want let's see what do we got select size do we have 2x yes we do there's a hoodie as well that's the women's cut. I like that darker green, though. Meaningful conversations with the lizard. What is this? Oh, sticker. Huh. Okay. I want the shirt. This might be a fun prize to give away. And maybe for the 100th stream, which is... Uh, when's that one coming up? Which one is this? This is, this is number 95. So five streams from now, maybe this will be a good prize. What do you think? Buy you a Swissness of beer shirt. <laughs> I'm gonna put this over in my uh, tabs of other things to check out. I want to hear those lizard conversations, TBD. That sounds like it would be good stuff. Okay, it doesn't really know the difference between ASP.NET Core Pod or a Couchbase Node Pod, um, which which may be fine for some situations. But um, but not but not all. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, what, I guess the point is, I mean, you could probably. So you could teach configure Kubernetes yourself this 
could require a lot of scripting and extra work. Okay, um, so then I want to click animate couch base, uh, couch base appear. Uh, so meanwhile, couch base has its own API that Kubernetes, that, that allows you to configure, uh, scale, backup, um, set up, buckets, etc. Um, so click and then operator up here. An operator uh, is like a middleman to translate, is what Naren Dev says, which I think is pretty good. An operator is like a middleman to translate. Helps Kubernetes and Couchbase talk effectively. So I can create a YAML file uh, like in the previous slide, uh, that is, um, that is of a kind, kind in quotes, uh, that the operator provides to Kubernetes. Okay. Uh, next slide. Um, there are operators for a, a number of different types of software. I'm most familiar with stateful, uh, with operators for stateful apps like databases, uh, Kafka, etc. Um, but uh, there are a variety of operators all designed to provide uh, effective or efficient or specific, provide more specific API translation uh, to Kubernetes. Okay. Uh, and then operator hub.io is on the screen. It's not super legible, but you can kind of see some of the icons there. You see Couchbase, of course, Cassandra, Cockroach, other databases. I've got databases highlighted here, etc. Okay, I think that's all I want to say about operators. Two slides worth is good. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe one more point about you don't have to use an operator. But if one is available, um, I, rec I recommend using it. I recommend using it. <laughs> I recommend using it to, to, I don't know, to, to save time and, um, uh, and to let, let it do the hard work, basically, is what I'm trying to say. And uh, to save time and let the operator do the hard work for you or maybe not hard work. I don't want to say it's hard because um, that's making a value judgment, but do the plumbing work maybe. So if I say, let it do the hard work, that implies that, oh, you, you as a developer aren't doing the hard work. You certainly are, but um, let it do the plumbing work for you, I think makes, it's a little, little bit, uh, more accurate and uh, doesn't involve me saying one person's work is harder than another person's work. So uh, I think that sounds good. Okay, it's still something I'd probably botch while I'm while I'm actually doing the presentation and say hard work instead of plumbing. But it's good to have those notes there. I'll go through and practice it. Okay, and AKS. Okay, so now um, um, is there any good graphics? for Azure AKS. Maybe I get for insp inspiration, some sort of visual representation of this that they're preferring. That's pretty cool, this little 3D thing. Um, what else we got? Built-in best practices. Oh boy. All those are the best practices. On premises? Hmm. Edge multi-cloud, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything in the documentation, maybe. Let's see what we got here. What is AKS? And I'm not, again, I'm not going to go into super detail here. It's just basically Kubernetes running on Azure. That's all it really is. I mean, that's maybe that's what I do, is I just Kubernetes, Kubernetes logo, and Azure logo. I don't know. That might be enough. Let's see. Azure logo. That weird looking A thing. Uh, something like this. Whoa, big. Could crop this one as well. Okay, looks pretty good. Um, okay, and so AKS is Azure Kubernetes. What is it? What's the S stand for? <laughs> Azure Kubernetes Service? Service, okay. Azure Kubernetes Service. Uh, AKS is Azure's Kubernetes provider. Uh, you don't have to use Azure. You can use Google GKE, Amazon EKS, Oracle OCI, etc. Uh, this is one of the uh, benefits of using Kubernetes for your microservice architecture. It's cloud agnostic. You can deploy to any, uh, prov any cloud provider that offers Kubernetes. Uh, of course, I will be using, um, well, maybe we'll get that on the slides, but I think that's all I really need to say there. Um, I'm not going to go into the ways that Azure AKS is differentiating. Um, oh, it might also be worthwhile any cloud provider, uh, Kubernetes, or even multiple cloud providers for a multi-cloud strategy. All right, Azure CLI, set up a Kubernetes cluster. Okay, so this is where I will talk about uh, the CLI tool that I, that I use to, uh, to do this. Now there is a, a UI for this and you might be saying, wait a second, Matt. I thought you were a, a UI guy. You weren't into the whole um, command line thing. Well, sometimes. Sometimes I find the command line to be better. In this case, I believe I do like the Azure command line um, for Kubernetes better than going through the UI. So I've got a bunch of stuff here, a bunch of individual commands. So I might start with Azure CLI. Is there a link to Azure CLI here? This is a blog post I wrote some, some time ago. Oh, here it is. So I probably want to put that somewhere in on this page, maybe. It's not a very easy to read UI or uh, URL. Okay, uh, let's see. Maybe a new file here. What do you think? Azure. Well, let's just say Azure CLI. Dot. Uh, MD. No, TXT. Let's go with that. So the first thing I'll do is I will do az login. And the next thing is uh, uh, create a resource group. I'm going to call it uh, uh, Code Palooza. Code Palooza and East US is fine. And then I will create a, oh wait, oh no, I did that already. Oh yeah, um, wait a second, did I skip something? 
Yes, I did. No, that's not. Crying out loud. Okay. Create, and we'll use resource group CPL. I don't know. I'll call it CPL RG, maybe RG. And then the name will be CPL AKS. Code Palooza CPL. So this creates the resource group. This creates the cluster. That will take some time. I might also make a side note about this generate SSH keys thing because there's still an open bug there. Uh, that uh, the team, uh, the Azure CLI team, is does not seem to be super um, worried about. But there is something uh, to know there if you're just getting started. Okay, and then credentials. This will connect to the cluster. So this will be CPL. RG and CPL AKS. This is what connects Cube CTL to Azure AKS. All right. And uh, okay, at that point, uh, that's it. So there's the there's a cluster. Now I can start using uh, Cube CTL. That's really it. <laughs> um, that's the basics anyway. There's some other stuff if you have multiple groups, things like that, but. I want to paste that in here as, I was hoping to get some uh, syntax, but it's a text file. So there's no syntax highlighting. What if I rename this to uh, PS1? Will I get some syntax highlighting? No. How about bat? <laughs> no. I guess I don't, that's the reason any syntax to highlight. Maybe a, uh, Maybe a prompt. Be good here. Just to kind of show that this is being run at the command line. Okay, and we'll paste that in here. And uh, can we fill this with black? Okay, and Console loss is fine. Let's go bump it up a little bit. Okay, maybe put a few spaces in between just to like space it out. Because I probably want to highlight these individually. Oh, and a link to Azure CLI probably would be good. Is this a good link though? Sorry, install installation instructions. Yeah, that's fine, I guess. Flavor. Ham, girl. Hey, Dota 2 attitude, it does work. Yep, there you go. Ham, girl. What's going on? How's the sandwich coming today? What's for lunch? That's two intros in one stream. I love it. I love the intros. One of my favorite things. Dota 2, I see you got some uh, discussion going uh, there at, uh, at, at Couchbase. You don't have to copy me on that stuff, by the way. You can uh, you feel free to, but you don't have to copy me on that. You're going you're gonna to work with the man himself, so uh, he's going to know a lot more than I will on that type of stuff. And Well, both of you together are going to know about 200% more than I do. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I'm, I'm super excited that you guys get to talk to each other and, uh, you know, hopefully something uh, will come out of that for Couchbase Connect. If not, I think it's great that you, you two are, uh, you know, uh, on a, uh, got a, got a communication channel open up there because he, I, I tell you, uh, he is really hyped about Ruby. Ruby is his favorite thing. So that is the guy to talk to if you want, if you have Ruby stuff, just drinking pop. Should get some cereal. Oh yeah, got the soda and some cereal. Mm -mm. I got a soda going on right now. I got Dr. Pepper right here, which has a little bit of caffeine in it. Not as much as other sodas that I drink, but Dr. Pepper. Grocery store is running out of soda? I, I know um, 
we're, we're, we're kind of like a Coca-Cola household here. And we've been running low on Coca-Cola because it do, hasn't gone on sale recently. So it's like full price Coke and, and it's just so, it's just so expensive. So we've been waiting for a good sale. I think there's going to be one happening tomorrow in my area. So might stock up. We got, we got an extra fridge here in the basement that we use for, you know, waters and sodas and stuff. It's getting pretty bare. I learned the generic brand name stuff is a lot cheaper. It is. Yes, of course. Um, I, I don't like the generic Coke as much as real Coke. Uh, there are certain generic drinks that I, I will, I will, I will do like the, like the fruit flavored sodas. Yeah, absolutely. Like the fruit colas. Yep. I like those. When you're drinking in my quantities, you gotta be very price conscious. Price conscience? Conscious? Yeah, one or the other. <laughs> no, I'm with you there. And the, the kids, we don't give the kids much soda. So it's really just for me and my wife. And she likes the Coke Zero. Uh, she And she actually likes Pepsi, Pepsi One or Pepsi Zero, whatever it's called these days. She likes that too. I don't like that at all. I think I told this story before. I worked at a pizza shop and we had Pepsi products there. And, and back then I didn't care. I was just like, yeah, Pepsi, Coke, you know, store brands, cola, it's all the same. But I drank so much Pepsi there. Um, just because it was what was what was handy, that I got so sick of Pepsi, I just started hating it. <laughs> I will still drink it every now and now and then. Uh, like if I go to Skyland Chili, they have Pepsi, so I'll get a Pepsi there. But Coke is my is my drink. All right. So there's really three things, four things going on here. Uh, I've installed. Whoa. We drink water mainly. We just found out that a water report in our area highlighted that there are beyond acceptable levels of contaminants in the water. Shifting drinking soda would be healthier. Hmm. Use a filter. Yeah, so we have actually on my property, we have a well. So I pull my water right out of the ground. And uh, so to make it, I mean, we probably could drink it safely. I'm not 100% sure, but um, it would probably have a weird taste and, and or smell. So we do have a filter. However, we just replaced the filters recently. And uh, the, the taste is, I don't know, it's off. So we've been, we've been drinking like bottled water and stuff um, until we get around to figuring out that problem. So you had well problems at one point, you dug an endless hole where there's no water. Yeah, I think the, there's actually two wells on my property. The first well stopped producing water. So they built another well out in my front yard. It's a much, much deeper, very, very deep well. Um, I don't know if you can get much deeper than that well on a residential property. So if that well goes, I don't know what, what we'll do, but hopefully it'll be fine. And we're, we're close to city water anyway. So worst case, we could spend the money and connect to city water. You still have to filter because you can't guarantee there are any contaminants from lawn runoff and stuff. Yeah, I, yeah, Absolutely. All right, yeah, and uh, we don't filter it for like showers and and hand washing and stuff. That's we we'd soften it though. I do have a water softener because otherwise our our water is very iron uh, iron heavy. I don't know it has lots of iron in it. So if we didn't have the water softener and we've actually experienced this for a month, everything gets stained red, bathtubs, sinks, everything just red 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 everywhere and it's the absolute worst so we have to have that softener i've got to got to buy salt of course the you know i can look i could talk about water all day because after i bought this house i learned so much about how water works and wells and septic systems and filtering all that stuff i could give a, a hour-long presentation on water easily <laughs> and and everyone would fall asleep but uh um what was I saying? Oh yeah, gotta soften it. So I gotta put salt in there every every so often. Uh, but the positive is I don't have I don't have a water bill or a sewer bill to pay. The closest thing I have is the uh, the county charges me a fee, uh, a very small annual fee, to just come out and inspect that my uh, septic system is working correctly. Um, my aerator. Um, other than that, I don't I don't have a uh, I don't have a, a water bill or sewer bill which is kind of nice not that they were super expensive <laughs> to begin with but 
It's one less bill to pay, I guess. Although salt and filters and fees and stuff, it still, still counts as a bill. All right. Okay, so I've installed, uh, I'm using the Azure CLI uh, to uh, interact, well, to interact, I don't know, to work with Azure. You can use the UI uh, portal if you want. Uh, first, I log in with AZ login. Second, I created a resource group um, in the East US. I'm trying to remember, do I need, can I use an existing resource group uh, for AKS? Hmm, I'm trying to remember. I've just been doing this way for so long. Um, Azure add AKS to not ask AKS to existing resource group. Can I do that? I'm pretty sure I can. Resource group. I want resource group, custom resource group name. When you deploy AKS in Azure, a second resource group. Yeah, I knew that. You can also provide your own name. Okay, that's good to know. Uh, specify your own resource group name. Okay. Secondary resource group. Yeah, that's fine. As you work with a node resource group, keep in mind that you can't specify an existing resource group for the node resource group. Okay. So a different subscription. Okay, let's change the node resource group name. Yeah. Specify names to manage resource within. Okay, I think I think I can I think you can do that. You can use an existing resource group if you want. Uh, third, um, I think you only have one cluster per resource group. Uh, so third, I created an TBD. I should get you something this evening after the meeting. I have stuff thrown together now. Oh, okay, you're talking about that code review you're working on. Yeah, cool. I don't. I don't think I saw a notification for your stream, TBD gamer. Am I not following you? Pretty sure I am. I should get notifications. Let me just double check. Nice TBD gamer. Uh, let's see. What? Was I not following you? What the heck? Sorry about that. I, what? I <laughs> Could have sworn I was following you. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, now I should get the notifications for it. Tuesdays and Thursdays, 8 p.m. Eastern. Hmm. So that would be tonight then, right? Okay, resource group uh, in the US. Third, I created an AKS cluster in that resource group. Now, this is stuff I will have done before I start the stream uh, because um, I'm gonna say that here, I did this it's a stream the presentation before I uh, started the presentation because this step will take, uh, this step takes a few minutes. And then uh, finally, I use get credentials to, um, you know, what's the right phrase here? AZ, AKS, get credentials, AKS, get credentials. So our first one, we'll figure it out. Maybe rephrase it as a viewer project spot spotlight. Oh yeah, I mean, absolutely. Everyone should follow TBD Gamer. For crying out loud, I didn't follow him. Why wasn't I following him? But everyone else should. So everyone listening to the sound of my voice right now, go follow TBD Gamer or else I will ban you. No, just kidding. Uh, but you should definitely go and follow TBD Gamer. 
gets access credentials for a managed Kubernetes cluster. Okay, well. Yeah, okay, I mean, that's basically what it says. It gets, gets the credentials so that uh, kubectl can access this cluster. Fail to follow, but for streams. I don't know what that means, but yes, I definitely could have sworn I was following TBD Gamer, and that might explain why I haven't been any of his streams, because I haven't gotten notifications, because I wasn't following him. All right, I'll put this link up there on the screen. Fail to ban, not sure what that does. I, hey, I don't know. This is this sounds like a bunch of that, uh, you know, stuff that the kids are up to on the Twitch. I don't know. Center that. And make it a little bigger. That's how you install Azure CLI. Uh, <laughs> okay, how does this look? This is one of those things, I don't know if I want to like reveal it one by one or if this is just show it all on the screen and then just sort of go through step by step. Oh, I got, I mentioned the, uh, uh, maybe mentioned the bug with SSH keys. And the bug here is that if your Windows, if you're on Windows, for Windows, if you're on Windows and your username, is it username? username. If your username has a space in it, <laughs> this will give you an error. And it's not a terribly clear error. Um, there's a workaround uh, where you generate the SSH key yourself. Reminds me of this keychain, but when pushing to code commit. Okay. All right, um, so there we go. So that's the four steps, and uh, every time I push to code commit, I have to go in and delete a bad password, save in the password keychain. Really? And why is that? Did you forget, or does it mess something up? Okay, uh, so at, at this point, uh, so that means at this point, well, so once you've completed these steps, that's all the Azure specific part. That's, that's the end. That's the end. That's the end of the of the Azure specific parts of this deployment. Let's see. I uh, blame Apple programmers. Sure, I blame them. Why not? Should be on Windows. LDO. LDO. Another acronym. Maybe I don't know. It's acronym heavy. Like, duh, obviously. Oh, seriously? That's what the acronym is? I guess that's one you wouldn't use often. <laughs> Should be on Windows, like, duh, obviously. <laughs> okay. Is that one of those uh, one of those acronyms the kids are using in their text messages with their LOLs and their OMGs? <laughs> like I said, old man plays Fortnite. That's why I called it that, because I'm an old man. I'm old... Okay, all right, uh, next thing is kubectl, and we're gonna do a similar thing here. I'm just going to show command line. Ah, not what I wanted, this right here. No. Oh, we got about 20 minutes till, and uh, that's the Azure part. Um, so start thinking about who we should be rating next as I copy over some code here. So I've already done the, already installed the Couchbase operator. There's instructions for that. I don't need to go into that too much. Um, it's basically, it's just Couchbase or kubectl create dash F and we'll do app 
Oh, is it couch base? Cluster.yaml CTL. And this should have command line in front of it too. Uh, create dash F. Um, what did I call them? Oh, app. Dot yaml and kube. Ah! Kube CTL create load balancer dot yaml. That's it. Paste as source formatting, sure. So I've uh, I've already installed the Couchbase operator. Maybe I'll put a link to that. It's actually um, I remember trying this out for the first time with the version one of the Couchbase operator, and it was a lot more work. Uh, and they've really done a lot of they've done a lot of work themselves to. Uh, slim that process down to just a couple of commands. Install it on Kubernetes. It's really super simple. It's this, and then it's this. And that's it. <laughs> There's other stuff you can do to customize it if you want to, but two lines. Oh, I got Couchbase on AWS for 20 bucks. Did you really? That sounds like a pretty good deal. Just a one note of Couchbase on AWS. Is that on Elastic, what's it called? Elastic Beanstalk or is it something else? Because uh, 20 bucks sounds about right. I mean, if you go to like one of the lower cost providers like Vulture, um, where is it? Where's the pricing on Vulture? Gosh. Where is the vulture pricing? I had to decrease the RAM provisioning for the data part of the cluster. Okay, so 20 bucks, and that seems about right for like a low-end couch-based server on vulture too. It's a four gig RAM, two CPU. I mean, that's, that's probably the, I'm sure that level is probably the lowest you can run it in terms of getting actual support from couch-based. Anything lower than that might work, but Couchbase is, is going to say, um, probably shouldn't do that. Um, and certainly, um, you know, Dota 2, as your, as your app takes off and poker players across the world start to flood in, you probably want to add more nodes to that cluster um, to increase your capacity. You may want to add beefier machines to that. It depends on if you're using query, all those sorts of things. But that is a bridge that you'll have to cross when you come to it in terms of scaling. But uh, the good news is, if you're with Couchbase, scaling is uh, one of the things it does best. So I'm glad you found a, a, a good, uh, inexpensive way to get started. And uh, I hope your site does well enough where scaling becomes a problem for you. Oh, a calculator. Oh, let's check this out. Oh, a calculator. AWS pricing calculator. Well, AWS does not want to tell me anything. It just wants to keep loading. I'll take your word for it, uh, Dota, that that's correct. But it sounds about right. That's right around the price range. I would expect to see. Maybe their calculator has scaling issues. <laughs> Maybe their calculator has scaling issues. <laughs> All right, I've already installed the Couchbase operator. Oh, I wanted to put a link to that on here. Maybe a similar thing to this one here, where it's like, what, 24? 24. 24. See, I kind of want to make these smaller links that are easier to type in, but the thing is, since this is a virtual conference, it's very easy to take screenshots and the slides, slides should be, slides should be shared. All right, here we go. Uh, calculator AWS would work. Oh, dot AWS. That's pretty cool. A domain name, or a TLD. 
I wonder if Amazon owns that exclusively. <laughs> Everything in that TLD. What is that TLD for? Oh, it's a brand TLD. Interesting. So it literally is just for Amazon. <laughs> Very interesting. So Amazon has all the about AWS. All right, uh, create an estimate. I don't really want to go through all this. I've been through a similar price calculator for Azure. But there you go. Calculator AWS is how you'd find, uh, you know, how to uh, how much it's going to cost on AWS. I've already saw the Couchbase operator. Check the link, um, but it's it's a it's a download plus a couple of steps. Uh, you could also use Helm if you wanted to. Requirements are 16 gigs and four CPUs for Couchbase. No, uh, I think that might be the recommended Couchbase server requirements. System resource requirements. Um, the minimum is four gig RAM and two, uh, well, two gigahertz dual core. The recommended is 16 gigabert, gigabertz. What's a gigabert? 16 gigabertz, 16 gigabytes of RAM and a quad core. Uh, but yeah, you could, if for again, for a just getting started out, just, you know, a single node. Uh, sort of proof of concept, four gigabytes and two. Now I will say this is, uh, uh, there, there's a little <laughs> Couchbase will run on a potato, a potato. Couchbase Lite might run on a potato, not a Couchbase server. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you can actually drop the resources down to lower than that. It's not really, um, I mean, for development purposes or for, in your case, proof of concept, uh, probably fine. But uh, for production, uh, again, especially if you want support, right? If you want Couchbase Incorporated to help you, uh, then you got to have this. Two gigahertz with four gigabytes, that's a potato server? Really? I don't know. I guess so. For me, potato server is like what's on the free tiers of all the major cloud providers. Those are potato servers. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you're right. It's, I mean, compared to my desktop, that's a potato. <laughs> my, my desktop has, what is it? Uh, let's see, performance. My desktop has f four cores. Is that right? I only have four cores? I thought I had more than that. Uh, 32 gig of, me of memory and, you know, uh, whatever terabytes of hard drive space. <laughs> This, this says you need eight gigabytes, <laughs> which for any serious database server, that's you're going to need more than that, right? 32, not sure how many cores. I could have sworn I had more than eight cores uh, performance. Is there, isn't there, where's the view where you show like all the uh, oh, logical processors? I guess I have eight logical processors, but four cores. Huh. I thought I had more than that, but I guess I'm wrong. Four cores with HT. More acronyms. <laughs> I'm the one asking the question today. What's HT? <laughs> Hyperthreading. Okay, got it. Hi, uh, geez, this is a 16 gig RAM. Yeah, I have 32 on mine. Um, for two reasons. One is because I run a lot of couch base. Um, uh, sometimes two or three nodes on a single machine. So I want to have the resources that will do that. And two, uh, I, I kind of designed this machine also to be a VR uh, headset machine. So I want to make sure I had plenty of, of memory and plenty of, uh, you know, uh, graphic power, uh, graphic, graphical processing power. So this is a pretty beefy machine. I gotta say, this is one I, I kind of, uh, I custom built myself as well. So I'm very happy with it. This is a great, great machine. It handles everything that I throw at it pretty much. And it uh, rarely, rarely crashes. So I'm very happy with it. Although the USB plugs on the front of it, like I've got, I, I got a case. I want a USB slots on the front, like a USB hub. I don't know. Sometimes it seems a little wonky. Or no, not, it's not the USB. I got an SD card drive on the front. That one seems wonky. You have machines for dev, streaming, and gaming. This is my machine for all three. 
and I will admit my gaming is like I said, it's I'm not the one who's running the latest Call of Duty or whatever. Um, Fortnite is about as crazy as it gets for me, or like Just Cause Four, for instance. Your game machine is nine nine zero zero K. I don't know what that means. Thirty two gig RAM and twenty eighty super. I assume that's a video card. TBD Gamer is a big gamer. You don't say. <laughs> I don't know. I think that's to be determined. All right. Well, we got 10 minutes till. I need to get going here. I've got a meeting coming up very shortly. I need to switch over to. I think it is time to find someone to raid. You should see his game collection. I used to have quite... I still do have quite a game collection. Older, older games. Retro games. All right, what do we got here? We got Begin Bot. Not very many people on today. Copper Beardy, uh, Lana Lux, uh, Begin Bot. So any, not very many on the team here to pick from. Any other suggestions of who to raid? I'm kind of feeling like Begin Bot. I, I, I think I raided him twice, but it's been a while. Beardy, Copper Beardy. All right, Copper Beardy, it is. Copper Beardy, we're coming to get you. Oh, it's mature audiences, so just keep that in mind. Uh, here is something to copy and paste into the raid. If you like, if you're a subscriber especially, you can use all those emotes wherever you go. Beardy got a potty mouth. <laughs> That's okay. It's as long as you know going in. Uh, so uh, he totally does. <laughs> he looks like a guy that could just trail off his you know, this long string of curses. I don't know what that means. No, he looks very nice, actually. He doesn't look like that kind of guy. Okay. Yeah, of course he's a nice guy. Uh, I've, I've definitely, I definitely know that. All right, so we're going to head on over there. Thank you for joining me today. I will be streaming on Thursday, 2 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, after that, I will be on a vacation for a while. So it may be a few episodes. You're gonna, a few I'm going to skip. But we're going to do the big 100 episode with a, some prize giveaways. So make sure to turn in for that. Yes, a vacation. Believe it or not, I will be... Leaving my computer behind. I'll be uninstalling Twitter from my phone. All those sorts of things. And I'll be, I'll be out of here. Um, but anyway, I'll see you over in Copper Beauty's channel. Hope you all have a good day. Later.